Hi, Joanna Hutchinson, code broker and whistleblower. Um, this is all about how it took me uh, a week uh, to find a government security services chat network, which I didn't even know existed, by the way. So after nearly six months uh, of being charged of beating two men, um, as I've mentioned previously, one which is a licensed bodyguard, uh, I received a court summons in the post. Even though I was told initially it was highly unlikely that uh, anything would ever come of these charges. Even though at one stage they changed it to say that I tried to strangle one of them, which subsequently completely disappeared from, from all the interview tapes, the charges, completely disappeared. Um, so the court paperwork was raised on the 30th of November uh, 2018 and then obviously that was issued it took a couple of days to get to me in the post um, and once I received it, it included the names of the victims um, obviously I did what any person would do who's been accused of beating two men um, uh, I researched the bejesus out of it because I knew I was going to find something what I expected to find and uh, what I actually found, very, very different. I knew I was going to find something there, without a doubt, especially the one who violently assaulted me, because it was very, very clear that this was not their first rodeo. They knew they what they were doing, very used to it, which made me even more determined because I was going to make sure this never happened to anybody else. But obviously this was four years ago. So over that period, I'm sure this has happened countless times, especially as there's a massive cover up. Uh, so now they think they, they can do it even more. And again, can I just say, I was traveling on my own on a train, a train station um, in a, in a very lovely uh, long dress, uh, just paid a lot of money to have my hair done. Uh, lovely white trainers, very lovely looking leather bag. Um, not in any way did it look like I was, I mean, even if, if even if I had looked different, that that's not the point, but um, yes, yes. Anyway, uh, and this is why I've made some notes because otherwise I obviously will go off in the tangent because there is so much to cover. Uh, but I'm trying not to repeat some of the um, some of the information uh, um, that I may have already discussed. Uh, so I found some very odd company information uh, about the the more aggressive one. Um, and there was no financial data on him. And that really didn't stack up for me. Something wasn't what wasn't right. Um, you now, I was recently, I mean, there was hardly any sleep going on at this stage. So I eventually found a document on the internet uh, that uh, was used again in, in, a, um, in, in a, an official capacity. There was, a, uh, there was obviously some violence at one of the, the events this man had worked at and there was an inquiry. So I found, uh, I, I knew... I found his name, I found all his contact details, and I knew I had my first real link to finding out who he is and what he was up to, because I couldn't work out at this stage of whether he was part of a mafia gang and he was using the uh, train network to um, transport drugs uh, and other such things um, across using the networks, or if he was an undercover um, uh, officer. Um, so this is at this point where I also find his ID, his security ID, which is when I found out he's um he's he's a a, a licensed bodyguard. <clears throat> so the only remote possibility I could find was a link to his address, and that showed it was uh, potentially a, a Ministry of Defence property, uh, which again is very interesting because that's called Mountain View, and in the code. The, uh, they also refer to Mountain View as being as one of the buildings that was watching me. So that's obviously some kind of uh, code name for their um, for their kind of uh, a local HQ of whatever operations they're doing out and about. Um, 
So I, I kept go I kept on going. I knew there was something I and I and I couldn't find anything on him and it just it didn't it didn't make sense apart from this odd company related information and again that didn't make sense. So eventually I took his phone number and I searched all the records that I could and then I found a, a very odd link something very strange the format was very strange I didn't really understanding understand it um, and it took me into a new site so I spent day and night reading this data and I knew I'd found something serious um, and that there were clearly hidden conversations uh, within this text but it seemed so bizarre for me to comprehend um, but I kept going and it, even when I read conversations that were in plain English asking one another if their encryption device was turned on, when they replied it was, which they clearly weren't because it wasn't encrypted and in plain English, and then they started to read unbelievable conversations in plain English. So I still couldn't quite believe what I'd found and trust me, hardly anybody else believed me. The only people that believed me are people who've had experience of understanding what my technical skills are and the kind of work I've done over the years. I used to be a computer programmer um, and that I'm a troubleshooter and I fix uh, problems for for big um, global corporations for on behalf of boards of directors. So I'm used to looking at a lot of complex data and uh, understanding what's really going on and then fixing normally the naughty boys and girls who um, have really been looking after their own interests that's obviously what i've learned over the years um anyway so um i reported my findings to the directors of the national crime agency by email on the 9th of december uh 2018 so this is literally a week after i've been given these I better cover up the uh, the names of the people these uh these are the written these are the written charges uh, saying I have court appearance. Um, uh, I mean, oddly enough, when I took the call from my contact, who's one of the directors of the NCA, I was actually in a queue in Waitrose in the Cotswolds. And it really isn't the kind of uh, the kind of topics that you can discuss while you're in said said queue with a lot of, uh, um, sort of elderly people. So um, I just want to read one of the emails that's dated uh, the 18th of uh, December to, to one of the head honchos at um, the National Crime Agency, just as an example, just so you know um, exactly what we're dealing with here. Um, and again, this is uh, 18 months before the, uh, the news of the chat network has had been released. Hi said contact. I thought I would send you a quick update as I started questioning if it was all in my imagination. I spent about another 20 hours reading more material. It appears to be international drug smuggling coordinated between people in the UK and US. Examples are heroin from Thailand and Burma into Heathrow, including pilots carrying cocaine and various other class A's in and out of Florida and Miami and around the US, boat, train, flight details all included. I think they have instructions for production and what to cut with stuff. Europe and South America, including a large amount of people are involved. Possible diamond, emerald smuggling stitched inside garments might be might just be more co code names though, and bullion movement. There's also a possibility of plutonium, etc. But as it's coded, it could be platinum or similar word they use as ingredients for production. Money laundering in the millions by the look of it, bank account details, Bitcoin transactions, guns and all the other kind of activity you'd expect to go along with this lifestyle. I think I've co cracked the code structure, but would need to speak to someone who knows about running software to unscramble the data. The only issue I really have is I can't work out how old it is, but once it's run through the software, it should become clear. There's a lot of information here, but this is not my area of expertise, so I can't gauge the scale and importance. If my gut is correct, they are using trains in the UK to move whatever they want around. Also a possibility of supercar smuggling. Also a lot of talk of lawyers, attorneys, cyber squad, undercover operations, potentially both sides. Um, I'll, I'll leave it there because uh, there is a follow-up video 
um, with me uh, um, going through all the communications I had with the National Crime Agency when I reported the National Crime Agency and the Ministry of Defence and the security services to the head honchos of the National Crime Agency itself. Um, and so the moral of the day uh, and the learn lesson is do not accuse a single female of attacking two men when she was on her own because there were no witnesses and then doing a massive cover up without expecting her to defend herself to prove her innocence. Now, I can't see any connection, can you, why I was on trial for four years for this, 19 court dates, um, and then the uh, and then uh, the establishment wanted to stop the trial and have it started restarted sometime in the future with one of their top barristers in a little local magistrate's court. Anyway, all of that will be released um, to go along with the rest of the information so you can understand exactly what is in this data and how important it is for your freedom and for your security and for your family and for their children and their children's children. Thanks very much for watching. See you again soon. Thanks.